In this video, we're going to use hangers to understand equation solving. Now, we've used hanger diagrams in the past to solve equations, but as a reminder, these equations are going to be non-proportional, which means we might have multiple operations. So let's take a look and see how this will work. So here I have a hanger diagram. Remember, both sides are perfectly balanced. And so what I want to do first is write an equation to represent this situation. So you're going to see I have 7 on one side. So I know my equation that one side is going to equal 7. Now on the other side, I have three x's and a 1. So I write 3x, 1, 2, 3, plus 1 little 1. So here's my equation, 3x plus 1 equals a 7. So I want to pause for a second. Notice how 7 was on the left side of our diagram, and I have it on the right side of my equation. I like to place my variables on the left side. So you are allowed to flip-flop these two sides if you want to. Now let's solve for x. When I say solve for x, I want to figure out what x equals. So I have to manipulate my hanger here to figure out not what 3x plus 1 equals, but just one little x. So the first thing I have to do is I have to remove 1 from here. i got to get rid of that 1 if I just want to get what 1x equals. So when I say remove, we think of subtraction. So my first step is to subtract away the 1. But if I do that, my, my equation becomes unbalanced. So to keep it balanced, I also have to remove 1 from my 7. So 7 minus 1 would be 6. So now I have 6 over here on the left side. So I'm going to remove 1 from this side of my equation as well. Now 1 minus 1 makes 0, right? So these basically cancel each other out. Some people like to draw a line through it to show that they've canceled out. So what I'm going to write is 3x equals 6. And I can see this in my picture. 3x equals 6. But what would 1x equal? So now what I need to do is I have to take these 3x's in this bar of 6. I need to split it into three equal groups. Because if I can figure out what one equal group, one of those groups is, I'll know what x is. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my x's and splitting them apart. So when we think of the word split, we think of division. So basically what I'm doing is dividing into three equal groups. Now, I'm not just dividing my x into three equal groups. I'm also dividing my 6. And that's what's going to keep our equation balanced because I'm not just doing it to one side. Now, 3 divided by 3 makes 1, doesn't it? One group of x. So I could write 1x here, but anytime you have 1 as a coefficient, you can just leave that 1 off because it's assumed that we know we have 1x. Again, some people like to cross off these 3s because they basically cancel each other out. 6 divided by 3 would be 2. So each group over here would be 2. And we would say our solution is x equals 2. And we can check ourselves by taking our solution and putting it back into our equation. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 equals 7. So that's how we know we are correct. Okay. And again, these are called two-step equations because it takes one step to get rid of this 1 that's being added and a second step for our division to figure out what one of those x circles equal. Okay. Let's take a look at another one here. So in this one, I'm dealing with the variable of y. So I have 1, 2, 2y, two plus this 10 here, equals 30. Okay, And I want to figure out what just 1y is. So my solution, what does 1y equal? Well, the first thing I have to do is I have to get rid of this 10, because I don't care what 2y plus 10 equals. I just want to know what one of those is. But if I take 10 away, and again, we think about taking away, we're thinking of subtraction, I also have to take 10 away from 30 to keep my equation equal and balanced. Okay, So I'm going to take away 10 from here as well, which would make 20. Now 10 minus 10 is 0, so we've basically canceled those out. So some people, again, like to put a little line through that. 30 minus 10 is 20. So now I know that 2y equals 20. But what does 1y equal? So what I have to do is I have to split these y's into two groups which means I also have to split this 20 into two groups. Now again, we think of the word split, we think of division. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Again, we're doing it to both sides to keep our equation balanced and to figure out what one group of y equals. Now 2 divided by 2 makes 1. 1y. Again, you don't have to write the 1 in front of the y. It's assumed that when you see a single variable, that means 1y. 20 divided by 2 makes 10. Our solution is 
y equals 10. Let's check ourselves. If I put 10 back into our equation, 2 times 10 is 20, plus 10 is 30. All right, let's take away the tape diagrams because now we got a little pattern here. We start by removing our addition here by doing subtraction. So we're going to start by subtracting away the number that's being added. And then we use a little division to split how many x's we have here into equal groups. So let's try one. 3x plus 4 equals 19. So again, our first step was let's take away the 4. So imagine we had 3x's here and then a 4. What we do first is we get rid of that 4. Okay. But if you do it to one side, you also have to do it to the other. So 19 minus 4. Okay, that's what keeps your equation balanced. So what we're doing is removing that 4. So I have 3x equals 15. So now I know those 3x's make 15. So now I want to do something to split them into equal groups. Again, this is where our division comes in. Split division. 1, 2, 3. But I also have to do it for the 15. So 1, 2, 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it equals 1x. Again, some people like to cross these numbers off so they show that they're going away. Basically, they're canceling each other out. And we'd say x equals 5. We could check ourselves by putting the 5 back into the problem. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 4 equals 19. Now, you know, I know you might be saying to yourself, well, that was easy to do in my head. What if you had one with fractions, right? So maybe you would try one with, with a fraction. So follow our same steps. Let's subtract away the fraction we have. Now remember, when you add and subtract with fractions, you always want to make sure you have the same denominator. And all we're going to do is subtract our numerator. So 13 minus 1 would be 12 over 4. Let me do this off to the side here. So 12 over 4, that's improper. How many 4s go into 12? Well, that would be 3, right? So we'd say 2x equals 3. All right, so now we have two of these x's. I just want to figure out what one of those x's is. is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two equal groups, which means I have to split this into two equal groups. 2 divided by 2 makes 1, so I'm left with 1x equals 3 divided by 2, 1 and a half. And we check our answer. 2 times 1 and a half is 3, plus 1 is 3 and 1 fourth. Let's check it over here. This is improper. 4 goes into 13 three times. We'd have one left over, so three and one fourth. So again, for our steps here, what we used our hanger diagrams to see is, first thing we're going to do is subtract away the number that's being added, and then we're going to use a little division here to figure out how many equal groups we have to figure out what one x would equal. In math, we call this inverse operation. We do the opposite of what we see to figure out what one of our variables equals.